sources is 48,105,850, which uh, puts us at 18,894,150 below the threshold. So, and of course, I understand that part of that is because of the of the garlic alone. But Mr. Lane, could you use your I'm sorry microphone? Thank you. Um, but that's not all. But part of it is also the fact that we have uh, um, that we lost money from 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 operations. Um, so. I guess I'm concerned that, that we're continuing to dip into our reserves. And uh, so what happens if this continue if this trend continues throughout the rest of this fiscal year? If if if, if our reserves continue to dwindle below what we had set up as as our target level of sixty seven million and and we're end up at now we're ending up at 18 million less, and maybe as months continue, it'll be even less than that. What, what, what is that? What, where do we stand with? I'm, I'm just kind of asking a hypothetical, but yeah, what, what, what does that mean for us? Well, generally speaking, and again, Jim could probably talk a little bit better, I can about the operational side, but I, the billing portion is catching up. We, we do know the billing portion where we hadn't billed for a month, that will eventually get caught up. So those revenues are still there. It just hasn't been collected yet. So we're the, the ones we didn't build, we're, we're getting caught up. And that that is reflected, obviously, in higher monthly bills for some customers. Um, and I know that uh, um, Jim has some ideas and, and has uh, adjusted the fuel factor adjustment uh, to, to help alleviate some of those concerns with, with the customers. But I think operationally, we're getting back to where we'll have, uh, won't have a deficit in operations that will be back on revenue equals expenditures. But it's, I, I think what you're referring to is the fact that we, we dropped fund balance through those special items. And that's, that was just, you know, again, it's a policy of the council and, you know, uh, as we're going into our budget for the 2022 year, we'll take a look at what those balance amounts should be and what, what the uh, um, each one of those risk factors should be and, and just take a look at that. But from what I understand and talking with uh, Jim and his staff, operational, we should be back online where we're not having, having a deficit funding in operations. Well, yeah. You know, as I understand IPL finances, we basically make money during the summer months, you know, July through September, whatever, when we have hot weather. And so we, our, our reserves go up. And then during the winter months, like we're in right now, we lose money just because people aren't using electricity very much. So, so we don't expect to make a lot of money in the next couple of months. So we're, we're probably going to be losing money uh, from operations in the next couple of months. So I guess I'm just concerned that that we're going to be showing deficits in the next couple of months, just as we've been showing. I'm not I'm not talking about what's happened in terms of the, the special things. I'm talking about the operational deficits because we have been having operational deficits for the last couple of months. And it would appear to me that we may have continued having operational deficits in the next couple of months. And unless you're saying that you think that that the delayed billings are going to catch this up, I don't know. But uh, I just I'm just concerned that we're going to be showing a, a negative in our reserves uh, at the end of the fiscal year. And uh, and you know I'm just just concerned about that. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know if there's any response to that. You know, if that that's just it may be just a matter of fact that that's what's going to happen. There's nothing you can really do about it. Uh, and we're going to have to deal with that. Um, you are correct. the The spring the spring months are typically low lower uh, load because people have stopped using their heat as much. They're not using their air conditioning yet. 
Uh, load usually starts picking back up again in May. So May and June, uh, we should see an increase in revenue for those months. Um, there are several factors that are that are affecting the bottom line here. Um, one, overall for the year, load has been down about 5% below forecast. Now, how much of that is due to mild weather with the exception of February? And how much of that is due to still um, businesses and things being suppressed by uh, COVID restrictions? Don't really, I mean, don't know which, which way that goes, but it's about 5% below uh, projection. And right now, 5% or five percent of the projected revenue is about $6.8 million that were short from what we had, from what we had projected. Um, additionally, we've not been collecting uh, late fees or uh, penalties all year long. Um, that was a decision made to forego that because of, of the economic situation. Uh, expenses we're paying the credit card fees, which is not a which is not an insignificant amount that we normally don't cover, but we're having to pay those. And we had eight million dollars of, of excess costs during the winter storm in February. So all of that has hit all of that has hit the budget here at, at the same time. Um, overall, uh, I can see our our right now our operating expenses were just below. We're just a little, a couple percent below 75%. So operationally, we're pretty much on target with where we yeah. projected we would be. Yeah. But uh, on the revenue side, we're down. Yeah. Jim, did I understand you say we're paying the credit card fee now again? We never, we haven't, we've never resumed collecting or charging the credit card fee. The credit card fee has been excused through this this whole entire fiscal year. Dan, yeah. is that correct? Yep. I thought you said now we're going to start. No, collecting. we are we are paying the credit card fee oh, between okay. between You're the three paying. utilities. We're paying the credit card okay. fee. Okay. You got anything else, Garland? No. Maybe uh, you can answer this, Brian. I don't know. Uh, I was told that we uh, sold the electric cars, and if so, how many? No, we uh, we we have not sold those at this time. I was told it was uh, they were selling them. We're, I, the plan is to sell them, but I don't think they've been actually sold at this time. Okay. Why are we selling them? I, I might have you. Sure. Uh, so we have uh, implemented a new uh, program in our fleet uh, department where we're going to uh, lease uh, vehicles through Enterprise. Uh, and so part of our um, program will include replacing uh, some of our fleet uh, in community development where these cars are utilized. We will then sell those uh, cars on the market and those uh, we'll use part of that to uh, uh, pay for, uh, you know, the outstanding loan uh, that is owed to IPL for those cars. Okay, that money will go back to IPL. That and uh, if uh, in the budget uh, for the American Re Recovery Plan funds that were presented to the City Council on Monday night. We also included funding in there to uh, repay that loan and, as well, so. Okay, then are we gonna lease for all departments? This is a pilot program. So uh, we're starting small and we'll grow from there. As of right now, it doesn't include any of the utilities all uh, uh, just limited to general fund departments. Thank you. That's all I got. Anybody else got anything? Hey, Jack, we'll leave with a couple of questions. Okay, Jack, speak up. Have, um, has the power line or the other utilities submitted preliminary budgets to the city manager since it's April? Yes. Okay. Uh, we had asked as a board to see a breakdown, more definition of the interfund charges. And uh, I would think that, that uh, we were told that that would be part of determining the fees for the future budget. So is that available for our review? 
we're continuing to work on it. We should have that available for the May meeting. For the May meeting, okay. Correct. Please, Christina, make sure it makes it into the minutes, please. <laughs> last, last question. This uh, chart shows interfund charges for support services is 1.8 million. It also shows you payments in lieu of taxes. What is the difference? In lieu of taxes are the 9.08% of the gross revenue uh, reflected um, as a pilot payment, which is payment in lieu of taxes as if it was a private business paying a franchise fee. The interfund charges for support services are actually, as I said, they're charges amongst the funds for support services. For instance, the water department does the utility billing services for uh, IPL, so IPL then pays them back, and that's the type of things you'll, fee you'll see in those support services. Okay, thank you. The uh, charter calls for an annual audit of the uh, payments in lieu of auto taxes. Has that been performed, or could we see the outcome of that? So currently we do have a financial audit uh, financial report audit, I would have to ask uh, the auditors how much of that is in that scope of their audit. Um, I'm not sure if Nancy is on the team or not, or on the call or not, but we'll follow up with that and see whether or not the financial audit accomplishes the scope of, of the, um, the charter reference. Well, obviously, you're interested to know that, you know, one nearly equals the other. Does that make any sense that the amount of taxes equals what the payment is? So the the if you're auditing the pilot in lieu of taxes, yeah, that would be uh, roughly if you would take the line item for charged revenues multiplied by that 9.8 percent, that would then be the amount of the um, pilot, you know, the utility payments in lieu of taxes. There are some adjustments right. in that. Now, I did say I, I need to check to make sure of the financial scope, but I, it, it is a major line item, obviously, both of the utilities yeah. and of the general fund side. So those are included in our financial audit review. Those, those revenues are audited as part of our financial audit. I don't have a report specifically from the auditor, though, that details their work on that part of the audit. All right, well, it'll be interesting when you can provide that to us. I just want to clarify, provide to you the financial audit? Yeah, something that supports the $13 million. Okay. Go ahead, John. Um, I had noticed this before, but now that you bring it up, the 9.08 percent, as I understand, is supposed to be computed on, against the the revenues. But when I take the nine million dollars against the 87 million dollars, that's more than nine percent. Uh, I, I don't have a calculator in front of me. Well, 87, 87 million. The 10 percent of 87 million is is 8.7 million. And this is nine million. Yeah, I, I will have to follow up. I will have to follow up on that unless one of my uh, the utility accountants could answer that during this meeting. So I can do it in the main meeting as well. I'm, I'm sorry, the main meeting. May and May. The main. Oh yes, May. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Anybody else, Dave? I've got a question about credit cards. Hey, hey. Punch it. Green. I have a question about the credit cards. Am I understanding that we do not charge people for using a charge card? That's correct. How much is that costing us? It's four, I think it's four ninety seven or five. That's Brian, there's a new it's about it's about a hundred over a hundred thousand a month, but you know what the account the amount is I think it's four ninety seven or something. It's like four dollars and ninety seven cents per transaction. 
Uh, so hundred uh, estimated hundred thousand dollars a month that we are covering. In excess of hundred thousand. Uh, over over a hundred thousand a month. Good. That was a that was a decision made at the beginning of the uh, COVID emergency that in order to give relief to the to the citizens, we would waive that that fee. Before we did collect it. Yes, uh, in in the past that was part. If, if they chose to use a credit card, that was included in their their billing. Was that a council decision? To waive it. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we we were going to collect it at one time. We did collect it. We did collect it at one time, right? Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, as I recall, the city council discussion, they were. They were upset that we were recharged that high a fee, as opposed because typically uh, it's two or three percent, and and they were upset that it's close to five percent, but they weren't able to negotiate a lower percentage on the credit card fee, and so then they just decided, to, well, I'll just waive it all, which you know, so it hits hits the utility companies, but and it's hitting hitting us hard when we're seeing we're losing money for various reasons. And this is just one more reason why we're losing money. Um, so I, I, you know, I, 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 I think that 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 decision needs to be reconsidered at some point in time. It shouldn't be an automatic decision permanently. I don't know if, if when they can renegotiate that that uh, that fee. Uh, maybe you know when. I'm sure you've been discussing with that company when they can re renegotiate that fee. Yeah, we've had quite a few discussions with that with that company. The company's name is Paymentus that uh, processes those. I've worked with the city attorney, um, our our utility attorney, on um, on this item. We submitted um, recently that we felt that the contract should be renegotiated or up for renegotiation this year, uh, based on a five-year date of signing the contract. However, they've come back and said, and they're right, the contract says that it's five years from the initial uh, go live of using Paymentus, which as it turns out was actually two years later than that. So we are uh, continuing to negotiate. We've asked for them uh, to, to, again, take a look at the fees. Uh, at, again, the contract, it's pretty black and white. It says this is the only way you can get out of this contract. And really the only way you can get out of the contract is if you pay it off for what the fees would be, even if we weren't using them. So it's, I, I, you know, I don't want to talk you know, about whoever negotiated that pass. It just maybe it, it has, uh, we would like to get out of that contract yeah. ourselves. Yeah, it's a good contract. Mr. Obviously. Chairman, would it be wrong for us to suggest to the city council that they might want to reevaluate the fact that the credit card fees are costing us, costing the utility a hundred thousand, and it was just a pass through before. We're not making money on those fees, but if we're on the hook for those fees, we have to we have to pay them. Was it wrong for us to suggest that maybe we should start collecting again? Well, it's still, Brian, it's still under that contract, right? Yes, we're still under the contract, and so it'd still be the 490, what, whatever that amount 495. was. 495. 495, uh, regardless of if the city's paying it or if the customer's paying it. All right. But what Dave's saying is, I know, I would hope that the council is aware of how much we're losing. I mean, maybe they aren't. Well, I, yeah, I, I think that, that we ought to be doing an analysis of how much we're actually losing on operations. Because I don't think that that has really been ex informed of, of, of the city council that we are losing money on operations. And, and part of the reason why we're losing money on operations is because we're waiving the fee. Um, and I think, I think we need to be transparent to the city council 
Uh, that we are losing money on operations right now. I, I think you're right. Uh, uh, Dave, make that a motion. Mr. Chairman, yeah. I move that we request the City Council to examine their prior actions of waiving the credit card fees to the end users. Since it appears that our existing costs are now over $100,000 per month, that's it. A second. 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 Any and more that, discussion? And more? that applies to all all utilities, not just IPL. Right? Yeah. I, I, I want to interject one thing. Um, a four dollar and ninety five cent fee to use a charge card is a cheap price to pay. Yeah. Like being in business, I can tell you that I know some companies are paying four percent. So if my electric bill is two hundred and fifty dollars and I'm only paying a five dollar fee to use my credit card, that's a pretty good deal. So I, I don't know if we're going to be able to negotiate another deal, but we're not here to negotiate. We're just here to advise advise the city council on what they should be doing and looking at this. Any more discussion? Please yeah. call the room. Yeah. Jack? Jack? Um, are there uh, sanitary sewer expenses? Why do they not get the line item for... Well, we need to take the vote, uh, Jack. Insulin charges for support services. Jack, we're on. A, we're on. A, there's a motion on the floor, and we're discussing. The, did you hear the motion? I have a problem. I'm speaking problem. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm. I'll. I'll back out. Come back later. Well, we got. There's a vote on the floor. Did you hear the motion? Regarding the cards. Yes. Charlie Smith. Yes, yeah. I did. Okay, call the roll. Call the roll, Christine. Larry Porter? Yes. Jack Looney? Yes. Garland Land? Yes. Joe Zach? Yes. David McDowell? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, now you have, uh, are you done, Brian? I are we? Oh. Oh, uh, sorry. Bridget McCandless? Thank you, yes. Oh, sorry I'm sorry, I didn't know you were here, Bridget. <laughs> Motion passed. Uh, is that all with Brian on financial? No, I have two questions. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead, Jack. I'm wondering why there is no line item for uh, They don't provide a service to the other two utilities, so they would not be charging something to the utilities for them to pay. For instance, water receives payments from the other two funds for the utility billing, and then electric receives reimbursements for, I believe, the meter reading. Or some of the meter shut reading. off the meter reading. Shut off the meter reading. So, but however, we don't have sewer does not provide a service that then charges back to the other two to, two funds. We pay an expense to the other two for that. We don't have a we don't charge out for it. Is not support services broader than that though? Does it cover other city services? <laughs> On the report, what you're looking at are revenues to the utilities. Okay, so well, actually, support services is a larger fee when you look at it in budgetary basis. I, I'm not sure where I'm, I'm following. Okay, the city charges, interfund charges for other city services. Other than utilities, right? And it's not on these numbers, right? The, they're included in the expense, the operating expenditure numbers of the utilities. Okay, then. Are we going to be able to see a breakdown on that rather than just a large number? 
we can provide that number. That would be appreciated. Secondly, where is it reflected um, incomes from the parties, other parties using the city's um, um, fiber optic system? Jim, would you, is that, that would be an IPL under, probably under other charges. Yeah, I'm not sure where that's, up, up. I'm not sure where that's reflected. Yeah, that, that's, that's included under the line item uh, charges for services. Charges for services. Right, it's, it's grouped in, we, we have, as you know, quite a few um, charge um, rate factors, and each one of those rate factors has a different account, and those are all summarized then under the line item called charges for services. Okay, I guess, where, where does one find those rates? I didn't see them in our rate package. Jim, could you help? I, I really not following. A lot of those are negotiated contracts, um, not rate, not part of the rate schedule. Uh, I'll have to get back to you on that, Jack. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Any Maybe more, I'll just share. Thank you, Jack. Any more things for financial? Okay, next item. I guess it'd be you, uh, Adam. All right, just a couple things here. Um, the priorities that uh, the PUAB developed um, over the last few months. That was presented to the city council at a business session on March 1st. Uh, that item was tabled until a work session on March 22nd to provide time for the council to provide any feedback uh, about those priorities. Uh, that item was, was again brought forward on the 22nd. Uh, there were some written comments, uh, feedback that were provided uh, relative to those priorities um, at that uh, work session. Um, you, you may have seen those. Um, they're on the city's website on, in, the, in the council agenda packet materials for that, for that evening. Um, the council, one of the outcomes from that meeting was a request from the council to have a, a joint city council PUAB meeting. So my I guess my request here is to uh, see if the PUAB is willing to accept that invitation and then we would work to coordinate a acceptable time for that to occur. Okay, well, uh, we'll need a vote on that, I assume, Christine. That would be good. No? Uh, all in favor of meeting with the city council in a combined meeting? Mr. Chair, somebody yeah. need to make a motion. So moved. Make a Second. motion. Make a motion, Garland. Or Dave, make you may. I made the motion. Second. 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 Any more discussion on it? Call the roll, please. Larry Porter? Yes. Jack Looney? Yes. Garland Land? Yes. Joe Zach? Yes. Mark McDonald? Okay. David McDowell? Yes. Bridget McCandless? Yes. Motion passed. Adam, uh, will this, you be scheduling this or? 
yeah, we'll staff will work on a time that'll that'll work for everyone involved. It'll it'll probably take some time to get it scheduled, but we'll okay. we'll start working on that. ASAP. Okay. And then the the second item here, I think, um, Mr. Chair, this is maybe an item you want to to discuss is the the dashboard committee that was um, discussed at the at the last board meeting and. Uh, working to revise the, the dashboard and getting some committee members. So I'll kick it back to you for that one. Okay, I uh, we I just got a email, I believe yesterday, that Bridget would be willing to be on the board. So that filled the members that would be on it. Uh, she has informed me that she'll be traveling next week and won't be available. So it push it back out another week okay. for the meeting. All right. Uh, having a little difficulty getting a dashboard. I thought we wanted this committee to update it. Jack, how much time do you need to coordinate it, uh, Adam? The subcommittee? To get us a room. Um, You'd have to put it on the website, wouldn't you, Christine? I'm sorry, say that again. You'd have to put it on the website that we're having a meeting. We have to post 24 hours. 24 prior. hours ahead of time, right? Um, the problem was several or a few members turned down being on the committee uh -huh. uh, until uh, Dr. McCann was accepted. So um, there, she was only available at the beginning of this week, and Friday's not good for staff. And then she's gone next week, so it would be pushed out one more week. So, uh, but as soon as we can get your all scheduled for the following week, then I'll look at our staff schedule and get something on the calendar and we can get the agenda posted. Okay, we'll table it then until I hear back from you. Is that all right? Is that all right with the board? Okay, next thing. Thank you, Adam. Municipal Services Report. I don't have anything formal to report unless you have questions for me other than to update you on the 4th of April, we had our annual household hazardous waste event and um, I always bring you stats. So um, we had 380 cars come through and collected 48,843 pounds of hazardous waste, mostly paint, um, from 731 households. And for the first time, um, over half of our attendees were first timers. So. Um, still getting the word out there and having new people come through to use that service. That's all I've got. I have a question on that. Do we only do this once a year? We do. It's a contract. We don't actually run the event. We just staff it. Um, Kansas City, Missouri actually runs it in, a, in conjunction with um, Heartland Heritage Foundation. Um, so we're just a site. There's a permanent household hazardous waste collection facility on Doremus Avenue in Kansas City. So any of the participating communities can drop off air for free any time of the year. But the individual cities only get one one weekend, one Saturday a year. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Uh, if, if I own a uh, septic tank cleaning company, do I pay you to get rid of my waste? Currently, no, we don't. That is something we're trying to get set up to do. We don't have a good receiving station at our plant currently, oh. but it's something we're working to budget to, to do. We've had actually a lot of inquiries about that, and there aren't very many facilities um, in the area. Uh, you can cross the state line or you can go out to Oak Grove right now. Um, and those are really the only two options. So it would actually be, I think, a, a good service to provide some of our local businesses. We just need to put some infrastructure in at the plant to be able to receive. Okay, thank you. I, I worked in the, before the waste, I, I worked in the water. I just don't know if we had anything like that. Thank you. Any other questions for waste or municipal services? Water, Dan. 
like Lisa, I really don't have a, re a formal report to give today. I did want to just mention that we, starting the first week in May, we will start disconnects again. So um, we'll be moving in that direction. So just a heads up. If you have any questions for me about anything else, Jim's getting ready to grab this. <laughs> well, I have a question, Dan. Are we, are we getting all the meters read now again? Or? Yeah, they've done really well in the last last two months and it's really important this month to get it because because we had a late start on the winter quarter since we didn't have a december read so the winter quarter is actually moving into this month so we've the last two months we've got and, and especially all this month we've getting reads every customer that we can get in and read there's always going to be a few that we can't get but so that winter quarter will be based off these rate the reads that we're having right now and so we're probably halfway through the month and we're on schedule to to have read every meter. Uh, so they've worked out some different things to where if a, a, a cycle, Larry, you would understand this because you used to be involved in the meter reading, but so we're reading every cycle, but if a book doesn't get read, they'll split that book amongst their other readers and read it that day on an overtime basis and work Saturdays and Sundays or whatever it takes to get reads. Uh, you know, we don't anticipate, you know, eight or 10 days of freezing cold weather now. So, yeah. and rain the same way, we might have a day or two of rain, but they can't read, but they'll get out and get them read. So we're catching up with billing. You know, we had so many issues with bills delayed because we couldn't get the reads. So that that is significantly improved. And I got to commend the utility staff for getting that done because if we don't have the reads, it really jacks up the billing. And Do we have enough meter readers? Pardon? Do we have enough meter readers, Jim? We're getting the job done. We've 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 been able to get that wasn't some. my question. <laughs> we've been able to get some temporary uh, help from the union hall to supplement the folks that we have out. So that's 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 helping us get through. Well, through the union hall, are you are you able to get? What I want to say, qualified readers, or we've what we've been able to do is we've been able to get some folks that commit to us for several weeks at a time. So once we give them a couple of days of, of training on how to use the handhelds, then they're good to go, and and they've been they've been very good help for us. Okay, thank you, Jim. I have a question. Go ahead, Dave. We are getting ready to reestablish cutoffs again. Yes. Um, do I understand that we're not collecting any late fees right now? We'll continue not to do late fees until we want to make sure all these meter reads are right and that people have plenty of time to pay their bills. So we're not going forward with a late fee charges yet. So that 5% penalty on your last month bill, if you don't pay it in a timely manner, is is correct. And the fact that if you don't have, if we don't give them, you know, like there's X number of days to get it paid, we don't want to hit them with a late fee because of billing being delayed because of meter reading. So that's the reason why we haven't done that. Am I reading this correct that we have roughly seven hundred thousand dollars in penalties each month? I'd have to look at his is whatever he has is what was delayed. It's is it monthly, Jim? I couldn't answer that because I don't. I mean, that's probably if you take. Does it show? Is it breaking out, Jim? I didn't. It's got penalties, 527000 that, That's that for the electric. Year okay, if that's year to date, then that would be spread okay, over. Okay, so we're talking three months. And then since we have another 170000 over here on water and 200000 on sanitary sewer. I mean, that's a lot of a lot of money. That's in Correct. July. Fiscal year, fiscal year, not, not calendar year. Okay. Go ahead, Carl. Sixty-six percent of the year is what that's showing. Sixty-seven percent of whatever that value is, you'd have to divide it by sixty-seven percent to figure out what the monthly charge. I didn't do that, but yes, it's a significant amount of money for folks that if they don't pay within their time period on the before their next bill goes out, that's what typically be five percent of the current bill that you have, and it's a fee for that. Yes, that is a significant dollar amount. Thank you. So I don't know if this goes to water or IPL, but uh, I know that uh, CSL um, just got $11 million to help 
uh, people with their back rent and, and utilities. Are you seeing many people who are coming in with uh, back utility bills that you're able to get paid through CSL now? This just happened within the past couple of weeks or so, so I don't know if, if you're seeing much response that way yet. Correct. They have that opportunity. We'd send them to the CSL because we're not administering that fund. Right. But uh, we would send them that direction. But again, we wouldn't necessarily know whether they were approved or CSL paid it. And the fact that we're not shutting off doesn't cause people to be driven towards that. So come May 1st, I would say that we'll get a whole lot more folks asking about help and when they, because right now they there's no motive to pay since we're not disconnecting and we're not charging late fees and we're not charging basically anything other than. So you haven't uh, seen a whole lot of revenues right yet. Correct. So the answer to your question is that we would steer them that direction because that is a great source of funding that's not ever been there before. And that's exactly what we will would be doing. Yeah, and that's I didn't what know we are if, doing. if most people are using it for their back rent or well, this, if you're seeing much for utilities. utilities. So it does include utilities in that. It does include utilities, but I didn't know if, if there's a much demand for utilities. I know there's a demand for, for rent. You but I don't know if there's much demand for utilities. I don't know about CSL, but I can tell you that our iShare program is on track to be at its normal its normal spending levels for the for the budget year. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. It's my turn. <laughs> Mr. Nail. First of all, I, I, I'm very, very happy to inform you that uh, for the second time in a row, uh, we have been awarded the American Public Power Association's uh, Diamond Award for Reliability, the RP3 Award. Uh, that's a measure of your both the the frequency of your outages as well as the how short they are, and uh, that puts us like in the like 99th percentile of util of, of public utilities across the country. So really proud of our teams out there; they do a good job and uh, keeping the lights on. And it's a three-year award, so this is the and this is the second time in a row we've gotten the Diamond Award. Congratulations. Um, we had a request from Dr. McCandless for uh, some information about a couple of uh, le pending legislation items, uh, House Bill 835 and Senate Bill 280, and what those impacts are for our utilities. Uh, House Bill 835 uh, will allow independent power producers, those are wholesale generator uh, facilities, um, it will allow them to be charged the lower wholesale rate for any energy that's actually used in their production, the production side of their operation. They would have to pay retail rates for their offices, their, you know, their HVAC and that sort of thing, but anything directly related to their generation system, they could get the wholesale rate. It really is not a large impact for us because the only, the only independent power producer we have on our system is MC Power. Uh, and the, the solar farm, the operation of the, the operation of those solar panels is very minimal uh, electric use, and right now the arrangement we have with them is uh, that we just do a net, uh, whatever they can, whatever they consume comes off of what they generate, and then we pay for we pay for the the balance. Um, so HP eight thirty five uh, companies like Dogwood. That would be a that would be significant for for Dogwood. It would allow them to lower their operating expenses because anything actually running those turbines and the water plant and all that as part of their generation facility, they could get wholesale rates instead of the retail. Um, Senate Bill 280 uh, raises the assessment rate that the Public Service Commission charges to utilities in order to pay for the Public Service Commission's operation and oversight and their legal counsel. Uh, as a municipal utility, we don't pay an assessment, an assessment to the Public Service Commission, so Senate Bill 280 doesn't impact us. And that's all I have. Bridget? As, as the chair of it, really my questions were all about what impact that would have for uh, IPL, so I appreciate that update. Thank you. Thanks, Bridget. So I have another question on, on legislation. I know there's another bill in the Missouri legislature related just to Dogwood. Does that affect us at all? Or do you know what that bill was? I'm, I have to, I'll have to look at that one. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. It, it didn't seem to be controversial, but I, 
since we depend upon dogwood so much, uh, I didn't know if, if we're really tracking that one or if it's, um, but I don't. We get a weekly update from our lobbyists. I'll right. have to that's I'll where I check saw and see. It. That's where I saw it. I'll have to look that one up. Yeah. Jack, Joe Jack. Yeah, Jim, on that uh, APBA award of reliability, I've, I've been just uh, riding around, and I've noticed uh, tree trimming has been outstanding. I don't know who's went for this, but I believe you're going to pay. It pays off in the long run, and that has something to do with reliability. However, nobody wanted to deal with that 10 or 15, 20 years ago. But uh, from what I've seen, the feeder circuits are really clean. Well, thank so you. It's looking good. So the reliability is, comes with that, aside from the other things you're doing. It does. Thank Thanks, Joe. Anything else, Jim? That's it. Let me let me go back to you. You gave us some information uh, last time on on the solar farm, and we really never had any discussion on it. That we're losing, if I remember, close to nine hundred thousand dollars, eight or nine hundred thousand dollars a year on that solar farm situation. Do we have any options on how to get out of that mess? The contract does uh, include some provisions for us to buy them out. Um, basically after, I believe it's after 10 years uh, of the contract, we have an option to, and I'm not, I'm not positive on the time frame, but we do have an option to buy out the contract. Basically, what happens is, after, if we give notice that we wish to end the end the contract and buy them out, a third party would come in and assess the market value of the facility, and that's what we would have to pay to terminate the contract. So that, it's not going to be it's not going to be cheap. That's six or seven years down the road. Yes. Yeah. That's that's really the only option we've got right now, as far as you know. We look like, at after whatever the time whatever the time frame is at that point we can opt to either get out of the contract or to buy them out uh, and to, in any case we have to make them whole for the the portion of the contract that we're escaping. And there's no market value on that thing right now, is it? <laughs> I know it's, it's down the road, but. <laughs> Who would buy that thing? Oh, they would assess the they would assess the operational capability of the plant and what the value of that electricity is. Well, you're not producing much electricity off of it. Not a lot. <laughs> no. I mean, well, I mean, obviously, it's not a good deal for IPL. And <laughs> we're losing a lot of money every year on that crazy thing. Uh, granted, we are not we're not required to meet some of the state mandates, but it does put us on it does put us on par with a lot of our our peers as far as the percentage of green energy that's in our portfolio. So there's some there is some value to that. Yeah, there's I, I understand that, but in terms of a financial, there's no value to it. <laughs> Unfortunately. You know, I, and I'm certainly supportive of green energy. You know, I'm very supportive of green. There's a lot better ways of doing green energy than what we did there. Uh, but uh, I'm, I, I just was hoping that maybe there's some way that we could get out of that terrible financial situation that we've got. But it doesn't sound like it. Thank you. Anything else? Maybe one more question regarding the... Uh Solar plant and solar farms. Would it be possible? This is Jack Lillian. Yeah, Jack. Would it be possible when we look at changing the rates that are offered folks that want to take advantage of the green energy to at least uh, encourage new users and reduce our losses? That's certainly a possibility we could take a look at, Jack. Um, I know the at the time that the at the time that the uh, subscription program was created, um, there was the the additional cost the subscribers agreed to pay in order to support the uh, the operation of the solar farm. 
In return, they got a, a guarantee against uh, future rate increases uh, while they've got the subscription. Um, the, the subscription rate we have now, obviously we're not getting a lot of new subscribers. Um, if we reduce the rate, then obviously, unless we get a significant number of new subscribers, if we reduce the subscription rate, we're gonna lose revenue. Um, so it, it'll be a balancing act. We'll have to take a look. And that's what I'm suggesting, that maybe $200,000 losses is better than $900,000 losses. You're quick, Jack. <laughs> Pardon me? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> or even drink either. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Upcoming agendas. Anybody else got anything to put in there, or is it all right? This is Bridget. Hi, Bridget. May I ask, is, is there an opportunity to have uh, presentations by experts in the field to talk to us about the future of power generation? Um, uh, power storage and what they think, you know, the five and 10 year horizons look like uh, as we begin to just educate ourselves about the complexity of the issues we're going to face in the upcoming uh, months to years. I would hope that we get some of that in the next uh, upcoming items in the future generation. Wouldn't that be in there, Adam? So to clarify the question, is that like outside experts? Well, that, that's yes. what I think she wants, but okay. that would cost us then. We'll have to look and see what kind of resources are available and, and um, see if we can include that as part of the conversation going forward. Thank you. But I would hope that in the uh, development of future generation, you would bring forward some of the information you've already gotten. Isn't that right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, we have a uh, tremendous amount of materials that we've produced and presented over the last several months on this very topic. Yeah, we have. Uh, you, know, with, you open your boxes of Burns and McDonald's and you'll come up with that. But don't pay them. Anything else? Our next meeting will be May the 20th. Any comments from members? Hearing none, I move to adjourn. We are adjourned.